All right, so I don't know how many people are going to tune in. I don't have a huge number of subscribers, but uh, I recently ordered some more Rob Cosman hand saws. I already own his uh, dovetail saw, which I really, really like. And I'm going to unbox these. I'm going to use them for some test cuts to make some tenons. So I actually got the uh, medium tenon saw, which will be one of them. And I also got the uh, bench cross, the, the joinery crosscut saw, I guess is what it's called. So let's, let's get these unboxed. We'll get some of the, there's probably some oil on them. We'll get that taken off and we'll give them a try. We'll make a, a few tenons here. And we'll see how they perform. And I'm pretty excited to try these because I was at Handworks last week or a week and a half ago or so. And I tried some saws from some different companies. And I was quite disappointed in some of the saws from other companies because a lot of them are going to a hybrid filing or configuration on how they're filing the teeth on their saws. And I just didn't find that they were really all that sharp feeling compared to the Rob Cosman dovetail saw. So I'm really optimistic that these are gonna be some nice saws to use. So that's got that uh, medium tenon one. And I ended up getting two boxes because Rob had a sale on or like a free shipping deal on for orders over $50. And originally I just got the uh, joinery cross cut and then later on that evening before that deal ended, I thought, you know what? I kind of do want the, the medium tenon as well. So I went and ordered it later on. So unfortunately I made two orders, but. It is what it is. And when I was at Handworks, I also got a couple of new Lee Nielsen hand planes, the five and a half and the seven. So I did actually get the uh, adjust R's that fit them as well. I'll get those out maybe later on if we've got some time in this video. And my neighbor wanted some Cosman plain wax. So I got him a couple of those. Got some of the genuine maple syrup from Rob's well. I didn't get that on uh, my first order like I thought you would. His saws are always packaged quite well. They've got some nice styrofoam that the saws are wrapped in and they've also got lots of good bubble wrap inside them too in case you wondered. I'm just gonna take a quick look to see how many people are actually watching here. Looks like we've got five of you on there with a couple of, couple of likes, so thanks for tuning in. If you've got some questions that you want me to answer about these saws, let me know because it's pretty easy for me just to pop over and look for some comments, possibly periodically. But I think what I'm gonna do is test making a few tenons in uh, three species. I've got a scrap piece of poplar, walnut, and then some hard maple here. And I figured I'd progress through what theoretically should be the easiest to uh, harder wood and more difficult wood right there. So I think we'll just set a marking gauge to uh, one inch here and then we'll just mark off some, some shoulders so that I can cut some test tenons. And then I think probably it's gonna be easiest just to keep these at maybe a, a quarter of an inch wide. So, We'll mark these off at a quarter inch wide in just a moment.
or something close to that because none of these pieces are exactly on three quarters of an inch probably. But I did go ahead off camera just before I started this live stream to use the shooting board to square up the ends on all three of these test pieces here. Yeah, but like I was saying a moment ago, I'm pretty excited to try these because when I was at Handworks trying, I'm gonna name the saw companies, uh, Bad Axe and Blue Spruce and Lee Nielsen. I was trying all of their different saws and I was quite disappointed in Bad Axe because like I say, they're uh, like their crosscut saws and their dovetail saws, sorry, their dovetail saws anyways are um, a hybrid cut or filing on the teeth. So they've got some teeth for rip and some for crosscut. And I didn't feel like they cut all that fast whatsoever when I was going through the uh, pieces of scrap wood that they had over there at Handworks. So in any event, pretty, pretty disappointed with, with those. But what I was impressed with was how well the Lee Nielsen dovetail saw cut. I would say it cut very comparable to the Rob Cosman dovetail saw, uh, except for starting the saw was maybe a little more challenging only because uh, the Rob Cosman dovetail saw actually has a few teeth up at the end or the toe of the saw that are just a little bit finer. So on his saw, he's got 22 uh, teeth per inch for the first couple inches, and then it switches to 15 TPI for the rest of that blade. So nice and easy to start that saw using the, to the toe of it. Now the medium tenon saw is like that as well. It's 22 TPI for the first couple inches, and then it switches to 12 for the rest. And the joinery crosscut is 15 TPI for the entire saw plate. Okay, let's get the tenons marked out here. While I'm marking these out, I'm just gonna take another little peek at the comments here in just a moment and see if any of you have any questions that I'll be able to possibly answer as we go through these. So let me just take a peek in the comments here as we're marking these off. Hey Dave, nice to see another person from Ontario on here. Oops, the comments are disappearing on me. What's going on here? There we go. Hey Stacy, good for you to tune in there. I see you making lots of different messages on my Instagram and that. Jesse, always a pleasure to have you on board. I'll get that plain wax to you sometime in the next couple days here. Okay, this walnut one's a little bit uh, thicker than the, the maple and the poplar, but the tenon on this will just make slightly wider. We'll just take the quarter inch off the cheeks. Trying to go a little deeper, especially on the uh, end grain, just so that I'll be able to potentially make a little knife wall with the chisel. All right, so I suppose we will see if we can get a chisel going here to make myself a knife wall. Although I am kind of tempted just to try it without it for the sake of this video, so. Yeah, maybe we'll try this without the, without the knife wall. We'll get the camera a little closer for you guys so you can see what we're doing here. Uh, 
All right, I haven't got a multi-camera system at the present time, so but what I might be able to do is get in here a little closer using a smaller tripod, possibly, but we'll see how this works. So I've never actually used a tenon saw before, so maybe you can see that a little bit better here than a moment ago. Uh, 22 TPI for that first few inches, two inches, I guess, and then 12 for the rest. So hopefully this works somewhat all right. And from what I've kind of heard and seen and so on, what you want to do is work from one side to the other and go down one face here. So let's see if we can get this to go. And this is the poplar. And I'm not going to be super precise because I've got the pressure of the live stream and the camera and so on, but I'll try and give it my, my best overall go here. So I found that actually goes through there relatively easy and I'm definitely not all that plumb so I'm definitely going to need a little bit of extra practice with that. We will cut the uh, cheeks off in a minute but let's try this walnut here. But yeah I didn't find that very challenging to go through that poplar whatsoever and maybe I'll try to actually do a better job on this walnut here if possible. A little straighter, that's a little nicer. off my line there but I certainly know my technique is far from perfect. Give this maple a shot. This is the first time I've ever actually used a tenon saw you guys so hopefully I can learn how to use these things. Even that maple is not too bad to go through.
Okay, that's probably my best cut after I've had about six tries at it here. So, but certainly I got some work to make things more accurate. I'm not uh, doing that how it should be, that's for sure. But it is what it is. So we'll switch to the uh, joinery cross cut one and we'll just nip off the, uh, the shoulders here. But I guess we'll get the chisel going to make a knife wall. Take a quick little look at the comments to see if anybody's got any questions here at all. Uh, Stacy, I've done another live in the past. Um, but I haven't done many live streams. I did one on just how to practice dovetails at one point in the past, but that's gotta be, I don't know, six or 10 months ago. I don't just quite remember, but uh, nevertheless, it was some time ago. I haven't had a really good internet connection down in my basement shop, actually, Stacy. That's why I haven't done many live streams. And actually tonight I did hook up another router into the basement and let me know if we've got a good connection at all or if it kind of sucks because if so I may have to place the router in a bit of a different location in the basement here. And I think I will make the knife wall along the sides of these as well. And certainly my accuracy trying to go fast in a live stream is poor to say the least. But I thought you guys might want to see some of the new saws here that I picked up and I made a bench hook the other day. If you haven't seen my video on the bench hook, go check that out and we'll give it a try, I guess, for the first time on this little piece of poplar here. Just setting my saw right up against my knife wall. So this is the joinery cross cut and just to make sure I've got a good angle on this, I don't think you got a great look at it there, but we'll get in here a little closer for you and a little bit better. There we go. Even though this is a 15 TPI saw, it cuts very, very easily, I thought. I guess I didn't make the uh, rip cuts down for the, the sides, but that's all right. So definitely a pretty clean cut from where that tenon saw was, was going down. And, and my angles are really, really off. But like I say, <laughs> I'm not uh, very experienced with this whatsoever, but I'm hoping to become much more experienced when it comes to working with the handsaw. I don't know about uh, you guys watching, but I really find using hand tools more relaxing than trying to use a machine. I just like the precision and being able to work up to some of these marking knife lines and, 
and so on. And I didn't make the uh, line on here deep enough, I guess. Leave me some comments and let me know what projects you guys are currently working on or if there's some tools you've got on your wish list that you might be wondering about. I might actually have some of those tools or somebody else in the comments may have some of those tools and they can let you know what they think of them. I find getting some opinions from people in general is very, very helpful. Okay, let's see how this joinery crosscut saw works with this uh, walnut here. It definitely does not take much effort to cut through that. I tried not to rip those tenons down so far to blow past my shoulder and I probably should have cut just a little bit deeper there. the other side will come off. Walnut's a really nice wood to work with. If you've never used uh, walnut before, give it a try because it planes really nice, it cuts really nice. That seems to be making a really nice cut on the shoulder here too. That crosscut saw, that's pretty good. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but that's a pretty smooth cut given my lack of skill and experience with hand saws. But you will follow me along that on my YouTube journey. Get these a little deeper. And we'll make that knife wall on this as well. And I'll probably do a, a video before too long where I can actually, uh, let's see here. Okay, Fred's telling me to go check out Robert wearing tenon sawing. Okay, good stuff. Comments keep disappearing on me. Okay, I'll definitely check that out. Thanks, Fred. I was kind of hoping different people would comment on some other videos for me to go and watch, get some good tips on sawing.
I think I'll go back off camera and just fix up the, the other sides of these where I'm doing the nightfall on the, the thickness part of the piece of scrap I've got. Now, I'm not too optimistic I'm going to be able to control this crosscut saw across this maple, but we will find out here. I'm just going to work from the one side to the other side. And then kind of shoot all the way down the shoulder. Probably would have helped if I had have got the depth of that tenon set perfectly, but I did not. So my opinion on that crosscut saw, which is the joinery crosscut, is pretty good. I think that uh, you know it does slice through the wood fairly easily. I'm definitely not very accurate at making these cuts, uh, but that's going to come. I'll go and watch those videos that Fred was talking about. But here's the result that I've got. You know, definitely angled or wedged for that poplar. Okay, not my best work, but you'll see some better work when I actually do a dedicated video and once I've practiced with a couple cups of coffee here and there in the morning or on the weekend. Uh, the walnut one, also not very straight, but the saw does track straight. It's just my ability to get that saw plumb and to follow a line is not the greatest as of right now and I'm trying to work under the pressure of a live stream is, you know, and I'm not that great at it yet. So in any event, pretty smooth cuts on those cheeks and on the shoulders. The uh, maple one, maybe a little straighter, but at the same time, I could definitely do better. I followed the one line with the marking gauge pretty well, but not down the far side, I'm like a full maybe 3.30 seconds off of it. So that's pretty poor in my opinion. But in any event, I like the saws. We'll give them a go. I'll probably get the camera turned off here and practice for a little bit longer tonight. So I hope that uh, everybody enjoyed the live stream here. And leave me some comments. Let me know if you want me to do something different or if you have questions about the saws and I'll try to respond to those comments. Uh, later on once I've got some time tonight or tomorrow morning or something. So for now, have a good night everybody and go build something beautiful.